On today's show, we're gonna be talking about my new best friend, a magnetic filter holder. Good morning and welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment, the first live three times a week show here at youtube.com slash photo joseph, all about things photo, video, sometimes live streaming related. And today we're talking about something that is both photo and video. Essentially, if you has camera, you probably are gonna want one of these. So here's how this started. First of all, spoiler alert, we're talking about a magnetic filter holder, the ability to very quickly and easily attach your filter, any kind of filter, to your camera. And let me tell you the story of why I sought this out and was very happy to find that it existed. So when I'm shooting video, I'm almost always shooting with a variable ND filter. This is how I want to adjust exposure. Anyone out there who shoots video all the time, you know this, using a variable ND is a great way to go. In fact, I did a video on variable NDs at some point. I'll, I'll link to that up here. Um, so this is super convenient, but there are times when you got to take the filter off. Namely, you go indoors, you go into somewhere that's a lower light situation where you want as much light as possible coming into the lens. You want to get rid of that ND filter. So, you know, you're like <laughs> taking it off every time and then putting it back on. And, you know, maybe you're storing it in a shirt pocket. If you're going back and forth all the time, it's kind of a, ooh, it's a bit of a convenience. It, inconvenience. <laughs> it takes time. There's always the risk of dropping it. You know, you're trying to thread that thing on while wa walking up the stairs out of the subway in Manhattan. You're going outdoors and you're trying to put it back on and you drop it and not good. Right. And this is exactly the situation that I was in. I, it, been across this many, many times, but in this, age, uh, this case, I was in New York. I was vlog vlogging. I was just shooting some video and uh, I was indoors in the subway, going outside, go back in and so on. And I kept taking it on and off. And I'm thinking there's got to be a better way. Wouldn't it be awesome if there was a variable ND filter that just magnetically attached? I thought that would be really cool. And truth be told, the other feature that I really wanted, and I was thinking in my head, I want a variable ND filter specifically with a magnetic mount. And the other thing I want in my variable ND, tell me if you don't want this or not, is one that stops when you get to the minimum and maximum. So you don't just keep spinning around forever and ever. You know how if you go too far, the filter gets all weird, wonky looking. I wanted to stop. So I went to the video department at BH and I said, hey, this is what I'm looking for. And the guy looked at me like I had three heads. He's like, no, no, no filter stops in the magnetic thing. No. And then the other guy listening, he overheard and he goes, go up to the photo department. I think they have something up there. Okay, so I go to the photo department, start talking to a chap up there. And he goes, I got good news and I got bad news. Um, first of all, the stopping thing, nobody makes that as far as anybody knows. If anybody out there knows of one, tell me, I'd love to have that. Uh, but that ma magnetic thing, he goes, it's not built into the filter, it's an adapter. I go, ooh? He says, yeah, this way you can put any filter you want on it. So you can put your ND on there, you can put a polarizer on there, you put whatever you want. You buy a magnetic filter adapter, and then you put your filter on it. So let's take a look at what it is. I'm gonna show you the page over on the BNH page. Obviously it's available all over the place. Um, scroll down, there's a link down below. You can grab the link to it. It'll actually take you to a search result for it. It's called the uh, Manfrotto Zoom. And so you can find the one that's for the size that you need. Uh, but anyway, so here's the, here's the product. Uh, Zoom, the one that I have is a 67 millimeter because that's basically the biggest that I use. And uh, of course, as you undoubtedly know, if you wanna have multiple, if you have lenses with multiple sizes, just buy a bunch of step down adapters. You don't necessarily have to have filters and filter adapters for every single size. So anyway, so this is the starter kit. You get two parts. This is what I bought. You have the part that match, uh, attaches to the camera itself and then the part that attaches to the filter. And then you can see here, there's a drop down to get a bunch of different sizes. They even make a lens cap so you could have a magnetic lens cap because your original lens cap is probably not going to fit anymore. Um, even when you take the filter off, whatever filter you've got on there, it still probably isn't going to fit. So you've got that option, or maybe you just buy a regular lens cap that will attach over your filter. It's just, it's just up to you and your uses. Um, I didn't buy any new lens caps. I just bought the adapters on there. So the way it works is really straightforward. I mean, it's, it could not be any simpler. There are two parts to it. That part is stuck. There are two parts to it. There's the part that attaches to the camera itself. Very, very thin, very low profile. Um, very low profile, actually, which is quite good very thin on there, and you simply attach that to your camera, attach the other end of that to whatever filter you want. And incidentally, you would need one of these for your camera, for your lens, and then you could buy multiple of this end, multiple of the ones that go onto the filter, and so you don't have to take them off the filter as well. So if you're constantly swapping, let's say, between a, an ND and a, um, a polarizing filter, instead of having to screw those on and off, you just get multiples of these. You can buy them in separate parts or buy them as the kit like I did here. So this just goes on and, and as you can see, it's about as straightforward and easy as it gets. So here, let me do this. I'm gonna show you kind of just, it's, it's very it's very good. Like it, it's 
It's not going to grab it. Well, it kind of grabs it out of my hand, but it's a pretty good, strong thing. And I don't have to get real, like I just do that and it's on, like boom. It's in place, it's in the right place. I just go and it's in. And it's pretty strong, right? Like I'm, I'm hitting it pretty hard there and it's not coming off, but that doesn't mean that you can't knock it off. And so that is something you do have to be careful of. It is conceivable, it hasn't happened to me, but it is conceivable that when you're carrying this around, you could bump it against something and knock your filter off. So that is something you want to be aware of. It is not as rigid as screwing it on, obviously, but it's just something to be aware of. So if you are constantly bumping your camera around, that's something to be concerned with. I usually carry my camera on a, and when I'm shooting video, I'll often carry it on a belt attachment. And so I was concerned that it was going to get bumped and I was going to lose it. Walking around Manhattan for a few days, it did not happen. So that's good. I have not lost it, but it is a concern. The other thing that is interesting and, and is, I'm not going to call it a problem, but it does make me wish that the magnets were a little bit stronger in here. Let me go for a close up here. And so well, first of all, let's talk about an advantage of this. You know with a variable ND filter, so here's my filter, there's the dot that is the center point and you know you got your minimum and maximum. When you just screw this filter onto your lens, that dot never lines up with the top of it, right? It, like maybe it's probably at the bottom or somewhere on the side and you're like, you're like looking at it going, okay, I wanna find the starting point, so I gotta find the dot to start. Well, there's the dot today and you line it up to the minimum and then now you know your range. Now, because it's magnetic, it's free spinning, so you can put it wherever you want, which is actually really quite good. All right, so I go in here, and I find my dot. Where's my dot? Let's see here. Uh, where's the dot on the filter? Let's find that it's somewhere on here. There it is. So there's the dot on the filter. I want to line that up at the top of the lens, so I put that on, and now my minimum and maximum lineup dot is right at the top, which is great, right? That's really cool. But here's the potential problem, and it is a little bit of a problem. So this one is spinning. It's spinning. But let's see, did, you see, did you see the dot move? So I spin, oop, did you see it move again? So depending on how hard you hold it, how you're spinning it, you could end up, and now I'm gonna force it to go, but you could end up spinning the entire filter mechanism, so the magnetic part of it, and not actually rotating the filter. So it's something you'd have to be very cautious of, especially if you're trying to make a change to the filter during a shot. So if you're shooting live, you're actually recording, and you want to rotate the variable ND through a shot, for example, you're moving from indoors to outdoors, you want to do a rotation as you change uh, scenes, change environments, then you do have to be aware that you may end up rotating the filter and not actually rotating the variable ND or the polarizer, whatever it is, but actually just spinning the two magnetic pieces against each other. I wish the magnet was stronger. That's the thing. If the magnet was considerably stronger, then it would probably not happen. But it's a minor complaint. Again, it hasn't been, I wouldn't call it a problem. It's been a, a minor annoyance, but I wouldn't say it was a problem. And again, the other risk being that you could knock it off, but that also has not been a problem. Overall, I think it's fantastic. It's been really, really convenient. I'm really glad that I bought it. And um, for those who are wondering when I tweeted the pictures from B&H, this is what was in one of those bags. So, uh, so yeah, I think it's a great product. I'm stoked on it. Hey, let's jump over to the Q&A portion of the show. If you are watching live, you know what to do. Drop questions into the Q&A, put out photo Joseph in front of them. If you're not watching live, just drop your questions later on in a comment anywhere, and I'll do my best to get to them. And as always, if you want to support the show, the best way to do that is to head over to photojoseph.com support and consider joining as a member. That's probably the, the most fun way to do it, where we have all kinds of good stuff that we get as members of photojoseph.com, including access to a very small private exclusive Facebook group where I am directly involved and you're most likely to get your questions answered from me quickly in there. So, um, so there's that. All right, let's head over to the Q&A. We'll see you over there in just a moment. Mm -hmm. 